welcome back to another lab session today we are going to see manipulation of light intensity and polarization so as shared the as shared in the ma lab manual we have three objectives for today's lab first would be uh, verification of malus law second would be uh, changing the polarization of uh, input beam using a bifringer material and then seeing the bifringence property of some plastic materials according to malus law if a polarizer i have a seat polarizer with me here so if a polarizer is placed in the path of a uh, incoming linearly polarized light then the transmitted light will have the intensity given by i cos square theta where i is the intensity of the incoming beam theta is the angle between the polarization of the incoming beam and the pass axis of the the sheet polarizer so if the pass axis of the sheet polarizer is changed so the angle this angles keeps on changing so the intensity on the other side will keep on varying so that's what we'll try to see using uh, using our setup today and secondly we'll uh, so secondly what we'll do is in the path we'll place some bifringent material which will change the polarization so even due to that material we'll see the change intensity even if this angle is kept fixed and there is something in between which changes the polarization angle of the incoming beam then we'll see a change intensity because again something has changed the polarization angle and then met a net angle between the incoming beam and polarization sheet so in the second part we'll see the working of uh, quarter wave plate and half wave plate both has been explained in class so we'll just see the same thing in action here and in the third part will be just an observation of uh, uh, bifringent property in some uh, plastic material where due to plasticity there is some residual stress developed in the material and that stress results into the some bifringence property being shown by so common plastic like a scale and uh, anything common uh, so here we have everything that we need for the malus law experiment so i have uh, two polarizers the optical stand laser mount laser with a laser mount and uh, laser driver unit and uh, i have pin hole detector and pin hole detector measurement unit so i'll set up everything and we will can start then we can start the experiment So here we have set up for the Malus law experiment. So I have a laser a light source, which is a linearly polarized light source, uh, driven by a laser driver. Then I have a pinhole detector to to measure the intensity of the laser beam, and pinhole detector gives the reading uh, uh, in currents, which is proportional to the la laser intensity. And the scale can be adjusted to either microampere or milliampere as as needed. And then I have a polarizer here, whose pass axis i can just change using this setup so you can see as i am changing the pass axis angle of this polarizer there is a change in current signifying the change in intensity of the transmitted laser beam okay but uh, so actually uh, this uh, laser source is not a perfectly linearly polarized light source so so as to make it a linearly uh, polarized light source i'll place one more polarizer uh, polarizer in between so now i have placed one more polarizer in between and then i'll just try to so now this light uh, i can assume as a perfectly linear polarized light and then i can adjust the angle of this polarizer to get the maximum here first so now i can place my analyzer it's the second polarizer i'll call it as analyzer okay 
so so you can see as i am changing the pass axis of the polarized analyzer you can see the change in intensity of the laser beam so now if you can if you plot this angle of this polarizer versus the current you will get a, get a cos square uh, fit for the data and so that will be the verification of malus law so in the table here on the screen we will present you the data uh, recorded so you can see the data and the corresponding plot and it shows the cos square variation of the transmitted intensity of light okay so now we'll move on to the next experiment that is uh, uh, characterizing half wave plate and quarter wave plate so okay so to do that we have this general setup where we have the very same setup that we use for malus law only difference here is the analyzer is kept at cross angle to the polarizer so due to which the intensity output intensity will fall to zero so i'll just trust uh, i'll just adjust the polarizer angle to make the output in intensity fall to zero so you can already see that the output intensity is in micro ohms so i'll further rotate the uh, analyzer till it goes to zero okay so this is the minimum that i got so this is the general analyzer polarizer setup okay which is used to analyze any material which just changes the polarization of a beam because now right now the uh, uh, right now this analyzer polarizer angle has been set to cross angle so that the output int intensity is minimum but if we place anything which changes the polarization just that interferes with the polarization here that will result in the uh, uh, that will result in some intensity at the output and the intensity change will be proportional to the polarization change produced by that material what is it a rotating frame right okay so this is the half wave plate uh, with me and it has a fast axis marked on onto it and i can change the fast axis by rotating the uh, rotating frame so now if this fast axis is kept at some angle theta to the polarizer angle so so as explained in class the half wave plate rotates the polarization of the incoming beam by 2 theta so the same uh, effect we'll observe here using the cross analyzer polarizer setup so now i have placed the half wave plate in between the cross analyzer polarizer setup and i have placed such that that the fast axis of this uh, half wave plate is along the polarization of the incoming beam light so you can see that there is no rotation because uh, if it is a zero degree it is not rotated and that's why the current is still uh, at the minimum so now if i place a fast axis at some angle theta to the polarization of the input beam the output beam will have the polarization rotated by twice the that fixed angle compared to the input beam so now if i rotate the half wave plate by some angle theta say 20 degree so i'll start the rotation here so from here i'll just rotate it so if i rotate it by 20 degree so you can see that the current here at the uh, detector has increased and so this is because the half wave plate has brought about the rotation of the uh, input beam by 40 degree because it was kept at 20 degree to the polarization of the input beam so it has rotated the input beam by overall 40 degree and we can verify the same by rotating the uh, analyzer by 40 degree to get back uh, the minimum intensity here we'll rotate the analyzer till we get a minimum back over there so i'll start rot rotating so you can see that reading right now is uh, in some milliamps so i'll start the rotation so you can see that there is a minimum somewhere around here at 16.8 okay so any any further above that is increasing that side as well as increasing that side so somewhere here there is a minimum here 16.8 so now we can see the reading here so it is reading 140 degree so you can see that the uh, now it the total uh, angle by which i rotate the polarizer from is from 180 to 140 degree so it is 40 degree so this is how we uh, this is this shows that 
the halfway plate has rotated the input beam by 40 degree when it was kept at when its fast axis was kept at 20 degree to the input beam so this concludes the halfway plate characterization so now we'll move on to the quarter wave plate so we so we'll replace the halfway plate in the setup by a quarter wave plate so here also fast axis is marked so we'll do the same experiment here so what we'll do here in this case is we'll keep the quarter wave plate at 45 degree to the polarization of the input beam we'll keep the fast axis at 45 degree to the polarization of the input beam so this will result in the circular polarized light and now circular polarized light once analyzed through analyzer should give us the constant current for all the angles as explained in the class already as already explained in the class okay so now i have placed the quarter wave plate in between the uh, cross analyzer polarizer setup and i have placed it in such a way that the fast axis of this uh, quarter wave plate is aligned with the polarization of the input beam that's why you can see that the intensity is still maintained it's uh, at the minimum right now zero, or zero. so now the quarter wave plate is placed at 0 degree so from here if i rotate uh, the quarter wave plate by 45 degree So I have rotated the quarter wave plate by 45 degree. Once I rotate the quarter wave plate by 45 degree, to make the fast axis of the quarter wave plate to be at 45 degree to the polarization of the input beam, the output of the quarter wave plate is going to be a circular polarized light. Okay. So now the output of the analyzer is constant irrespective of the angle of the analyzer. So you can see that I am rotating the analyzer here, but the current is very much constant here. So the fluctuation is to 4.95 from 4.4, 4.6. So from 4.0 to 5.0. So after a 360 degree of rotation, you can see that there is very little fluctuation in the current. So you can say that the beam here is circularly polarized and that was due to the quarter wave plates and that explains the working of the quarter wave plate. So now uh, the third part of this uh, today's lab session will be to demonstrate photoelasticity, photoelasticity in different dielectric materials. So photoelasticity is a property shown by some of the materials under stress where they start showing bifringence. So I have a plastic spoon which during the manufacturing process will develop some residual stress and that points to all those points will show some bifringence, show the bifringence of light. So if I uh, put this in the uh, uh, if I put the spoon in the laser beam path you can see that there, there will be spike in current due to the bifringence shown by the plastic you can see as I move it the current will changing because of the different stress at different point so it's showing different uh, it's showing different bifringence at different point so similarly I have many different materials Plus different plastic or dielectric materials. I have a glass, I have a cubit, I have a fork. So, uh, so in this way, we can actually take an image of stress pattern inside a dielectric material. So, one easy way of that would be just instead of the laser source, uh, we can use a monitor as a source of linearly polarized light. So, or it can be a mobile screen also if uh, uh, it has OLED screen. So that will also be a source of linear polarized light. For analyzer, you can use uh, a polarizing sheet as an analyzer. You can place it uh, at a cross angle to the polarization of the uh, light coming from the screen. For a pinhole detector, you can use another mobile phone camera to take a picture of the stress pattern. So this is a uh, setup. So in this setup, now if you introduce anything in between, any plastic dielectric material which will which source photoelasticity and you just take a photo from your mobile phone you will see the stress pattern inside the plastic so image uh, shown here on the screen uh, actually shows the one of the image taken in very this similar way and you can clearly see the stress pattern inside the plastic so there are few images there are some of the few images shown here on the screen for uh, uh, glasses uh, for different uh, color of uh, sc uh, screen and you can see the stress pattern inside. So, uh, so yes, the point on the screen, which is uh, in bright, is actually the point on the plastic where the, uh, there's a 
large residual stress and wherever it is uh, uh, almost uh, white it's like uh, there's no residual stress at that point so you can characterize uh, use this phenomena to find the stress pattern in any transparent dielectric material so here on the screen uh, Maris law plot has been shown so here we have what we have done is we have recorded the intensity output intensity of the laser beam at different angle of uh, at different analyzer angle so you can see that uh, this fits to the cos square curve so this verifies the malus law and then moving on to the quarter uh, halfway plate you can see the plot for halfway plate so you can see when the halfway plate was rotated by 20 degree you can see that a uh, uh, cos square curves shift by 40 degree and if it is uh, rotated by uh, 45 degree this plot shift by 90 degree compared to the original malus law plot then for the half uh, then for the quarter wave plate you can see that for the intensity remains uh, for the quarter wave plate you can see that the output intensity remains almost constant for the different angle of analyzer so that concludes the today's session thank you for being with us